Welcome to Hotty Hot Pots. Today we'll be making a spectacular Piscean pie. I suppose the common folk would call it fish pie. First we'll start with two pounds of good solid Maine potatoes. The uglier the better. They have so much more character. Funny, people tell me I have a lot of character. Well anyway, I've already denuded the potatoes. Make sure to save the potato skins for another use. They are infused with the terroir of good Maine glacial till soil and the hint of native free-range moose dung. Cut the potatoes just so, slicing them and then slicing the slices into a lovely pie shape. Mega chef celebrity Alton Brown told me himself that this is the best way to cut your potatoes to make mashed potatoes. It preserves the, the gelatin somehow and just makes them divine. Well, actually, I was eating dinner while watching Alton uh, doing his video online. So, aren't the little pie shapes just divine for a pie? Immense the potatoes in artisan artesian well water, fresh from the bowels of the earth, and humidify for 20.75 minutes. Next we'll need two eggs. These are fresh from my neighbor's free-range hens. He's a rustic man, of course, and he doesn't appreciate fine food the way I do. So I borrow a few eggs of his at night when uh, he's sleeping. He thinks the fox has been getting them. <laughs> but his hens are smarter than he is, and they lay beautiful, spotlessly white, non-controversial eggs. So I will hard boil these and chop them up later. Excuse me, I need a little tipple. Mmm. Such a lovely color and a little bit of a kick to it as well. Next, we'll start preparing the fish. Preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Ask your servants to convert that to centipede grade if you need to. And now the seafood. I'm near the rugged Maine seacoast with centuries of tradition of picturesque fishermen and boats mining the sea for its treasures. So of course, I don't want any of that trite old local rubbish. I want exotic, foreign bounty of the sea. So I have beautiful fish from China, lovely symmetrical blocks of whitish fish, and beautiful shrimp from Indonesia, hand fostered in exotic pools. We will use one and a half pounds of fish. I don't know how many kilograms that would be. And let's get the pan ready. Now, you will arrange your fish in a baking pan. My pan is hand-hewn from the finest Brazilian amethyst. The man at the shop told me that only the best amethyst is clear and pure enough to look as good as glass. You'd never know this wasn't glass, would you? <laughs> now, dot the fish with an ounce of butter and pour a cup of milk over the fish. Yak's milk and yak's milk butter, of course, are the preferred types to use with this. Um, it adds a certain je ne sais quack of hairy hide. Now we will cover this, put it in the oven, and cook it for 21.73 minutes. Now, while the pie is immolating, let's go outside and pick some beautiful fall leaves with which to decorate our pie when it's done. It's a little bit chilly out, so pardon me while I just get uh, some warm clothes on. Okay, let's go. 
This is Bear Dog. He'll be going out to pick out leaves with us today. He's a custom breed, very fancy. He's half Chow Chow and half Golden Retriever and 100% Chow Retriever. Come on, Bear, let's go. Come on. Come on, Bear, let's go. Come on. Come on. All right, Bear, let's find some pretty leaves. That one's pretty nice right there. Oh, bear. bear. God damn it. Now, our potatoes are done and ready for mastication. I'll use the hereditary mashing tool passed down from beloved grandmother Chasen and great-grandmother Perkins. Ah, good old Hattie and Bessie. You will add a knob-sized chunk of butter with some salt and about a quarter of a breastful of milk. Hmm, I wonder why there's a hair in here. Yeah. That looks pretty good. We will put in a dash of fresh ground pepper. And rasp a smattering of fresh nutmeg on top. I always keep nutmeg in my pocket, whoops, apparently in the dish, for whenever it's needed. Hmm, I think that's nutmeg. Looks a little bit like an acorn. Anyway, next we have an, another amethyst bowl full of our lovely Indonesian fostered shrimp. We will disrobe these and cut them into toothsome chunks. just a bit sweet. Very, very nice. There, now my shrimp have been peeled and we need a sun-kissed lemon straight from a homestead, Florida. Look at that beautiful yellow Ferrari color. We will need one ounce of juice. Now it's time for the cheese. I get this recipe from a dear friend in England. It's a traditional recipe, but it calls for an ounce of shredded cheese on the top. As an American, I know that's absolutely preposterous. So I will be using at least four times that much. Sorry, Barbara. This is so good. Hint of cranberry, it's just wonderful. Of course, it really is cranberry juice. Things are starting to come together now. I've made a classic beurre blanc, or as the people in the cheap seats would say, white sauce, using milk, butter, flour, and the cooking sauce, the cooking juice from the fish. I've used my Revereware pan, which I love beyond words. It was costly, but it was so worth it. It was made by Paul Revere. The man at the shop told me that, uh, as you know, Paul Revere was a silversmith. So this pan is solid silver. It's got steel and it's got copper underneath it to make it more durable, but underneath pure sterling silver, 24 karat. Now we're going to start pouring everything in. I'm going to put the fish in. Chop that up a little bit. Put the eggs and the lemon juice is in here as well. Put the shrimp in. The recipe calls for capers and parsley, but I think green is just so gauche, so I'll be leaving that alone. We'll mix this up a little bit. Now I've paddled all the ingredients together and put them into my beautiful amethyst pan. I will cover this now with the mashed potatoes very delicately. There. Now I've dolloped the mashed potatoes on the top. Let's make some lovely sinus waves along the top of this. Beautiful Piscine pie. Reminiscent of the sea. 
see yeah. as blue as the eyes of... Never mind. Don't make the waves too wavy. You don't want anybody getting seasick while they're eating your lovely pie. Now festoon the top of your pie with your ridiculous amount of cheddar. And this is going to go into the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 to 40 minutes. Now at last, our beautiful Piscine pie is out of the oven. Let's take a serving of it and see how it tastes. Simply divine. Thank you so much for joining us for today's episode of Hottie Hot Pots. Join us next time where we will be practicing how to create hand-cooked crisps. Toodaloo!